Traveling around America can be a weird experience. By day you could be walking around the Rocky Mountains. By nighttime you're ordering Pizza Hut to your room at 1am, which I've just realized isn't nighttime. I should mention that neither of those things have happened to me since 2018. For this past Labor Day weekend I did find myself in the bountiful kingdom of Indiana. While there I stayed at a Best Western Plus, the crown jewel of hospitality. And those aren't my words, those are the words of your Uncle Julie and Auntie Bob, probably. On this occasion I decided to turn up looking decidedly Midwestern. A pair of jeans, a sports shirt, albeit an English one, and a baseball cap. But to be honest I only wore the cap because I ran out of shampoo and couldn't be bothered to replace it. Anyway, on to the hotel! Two very badly made beds, you can't get the staff these days. We've just woken up, it's, that's not how they were when we came in. At this point you might be wondering why I'm doing a video about my comfortable, if largely forgettable, stay at one of America's many hotel chains. Well, during this weekend's family get-together, this production provided the perfect excuse to get away from my wife's cousin Chad, who exclusively talks about monster energy drinks. And secondly, it all got me wondering how America ended up with so many hotel chains. Well, as with most things, it all took off after World War II stopped happening. In 1956, US President and future Ed Harris character Dwight Eisenhower signed the Federal Aid Highway Act into law. This ensured the creation of a federally standardized interstate highway system to be constructed across the nation. As the post-war population boomed, so did the automobile industry. In the 1950s, cars became affordable and close to 75 million vehicles were manufactured in the United States throughout the decade. Clearly, people were driving, and often over great distances. This meant that they needed something to do once they got there, and, just as importantly, somewhere to stay. The beds are comfy. I mean, you'd expect that, I suppose, of any kind of hotel, but these are nice, and no bed bugs. We checked, I mean, because we've run into that situation before, at a Motel 6, and that is what you'd expect. And speaking of motels, that very word, a blending of motor and hotel, entered the dictionary via American English after World War II. But after the 1960s, their popularity declined with the emergence of both chain hotels and Norman Bates. Indeed, while one of those was busy killing Jamie Lee Curtis's mom, the other was busy killing it in profits. Do you see what I did there? Hotel chains became big business in America from the second half of the 20th century onward. And by the 1970s, the idea had caught on in other parts of the world too, including my homeland of Britain. As a kid, I absolutely loved staying in UK travel lodges with my family, mostly because of the existence of the minibar that I wasn't supposed to touch. Of course, as I outlined in a previous video, British and American hotels do have plenty of differences. But they also share many similarities, including a luxury view of the car park, lighting fixtures everywhere except where you need them, and the same for charging ports. But one of my absolute favourite things about these types of hotels is the nondescript artwork on the walls. So, for example, you've got this one up here. It looks like some sort of AI rendering of the Olympic Games rings. And then you've got this one, old books. Or is it a Midwestern farmland with crop circles? Another thing that both countries have in common is that when it comes to hotel bathrooms, you never know what you're gonna get. I like this because what they do is they demarcate between the sink where you wash your hands and the toilet through here so you don't get any of the nasty smells coming through while you're washing your hands. The problem is when you are sharing the room with another person, there's not a lot of room for you both to brush your teeth, for example, at the same time or shave your beard or do whatever it is that my wife does. Speaking of the toilet, I observed that this one has, even by American standards, a really high water line, which I can show oh, Dad in. I should have done that beforehand. Not going to show you after all because the water line has now gone down. But just take my word for it, that this place, it was like a flood that happened. Hi, yeah, I, this is room 108. I was wondering if I could just get a few things brought to my room, if that's possible. Yeah, just some extra towels, uh, some toothpaste, and could I get 15 bottles of the mini shampoo? 15, yeah. We enjoyed our stay at the Best Western, which is not a sponsor of today's video. That's why I can get away with hilarious jokes like, 
Ooh, the best Western is in fact The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, which has a 97% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm very sorry about that. That's it for this video. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that I don't have to. Until the next video, goodbye.